Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to what I hope will be a fairly short video, basically showing you my 1951 Daimler that has been in my family since before I was born in actual fact. Um, the car has covered 44,000 miles um, and was bought by my father in 1959 or 1958, I'm not sure exactly what. Um, at that time the car had done 9,000 miles. It had been owned by a gentleman called Sidney Jones, who was a, a farmer from Staffordshire somewhere, hence the RE registration letters on the uh, on the number plate. Um, Dad kept the car right up until really 1987. A lot of the time he didn't drive it because he had problems with his eyesight and to be honest with you, he couldn't see. So, uh, didn't bode well for driving. Uh, from about the mid 1970s, uh, I started sort of tinkering with the car and messing around with it and uh, keeping it going as it were. And from probably when I passed my test in 1979 up until indicated by the last MOT, which was 1980, 1987. Uh, I drove the car on the road and did a few thousand miles in it. Um, it always drove fine. Uh, after that, life got a bit complicated when I got into my 30s and uh, other things took over. I was more into sports cars than I was into to old Daimlers and the joke was, well, when you get to 60, you'll probably end up restoring it. Well, 60s round the corner in a few months time. And uh, yeah, I'll stand in front of the camera for a second. So, what was young, once a young chap, you know, a fairly old guy, um, and the situation is that my partner and I have decided we're going to move to Turkey. I'm coming back to the camera because probably the sound's going to be better there. I haven't got a remote microphone, I'm not one of these professional blogger types. Uh, this is only the second video I've actually made for YouTube, and it's partly historical, partly for promotional purposes. Um, Anyway, in the move to Turkey, over the last month or two, I've been looking at virtually every which way possible to try and ship the car over there to um, get it back on the road and running again. And to be honest with you, it's a bit like getting something the other side of the Iron Curtain. Um, Turkish people uh, don't seem to want vehicles to go into their country for quite understandable reasons, um, even old classics. So. My decision has been let's sell the car but let's sell it to the right sort of person. I've had one or two inquiries from the, the advert I've placed on Car and Classic um, and quite a few of these people have been a long way away and have no real um, sensible method during Covid times of, of getting to us. So um, what I've decided to do is to be fair to everybody and try and make a, I won't say an in-depth appraisal of the car, um, but certainly in a situation where we can have a look at it, um, point out its good points and point out its, its bad points. Now the engine's not been started or hadn't been started until the other day for about 30 years. And I'm going to put a clip in of the engine actually running and me driving the car just slowly up and down the drive. Um, quite surprised me, I put a battery on it and uh, yeah, the engine started, a um, bit of tinkering with the points and condenser, and we're away. Um, tried all the lights out, the indicators, etc., and everything's working fine. So things have been lubricated up. Um, mechanically, I would say she's still in very, very good order. Um, every part on the car, is, well, nearly every part on the car, as much as can be, is original to the car. Um, the only body work that was done on it was in the 1970s, uh, which were both the front wings were repaired and also a repair on the, the rear wing. Um, that leads me on really to the next point, which is I suppose you want to have a look under the bonnet. So we'll do that. So I'll open the bonnet up. I'll take
Now the biggest problem I'm finding so far is that most of the people who are interested in the car seem to be at that certain sort of age that I am when things get a bit beyond them. Now this is not going to be a car for the man who's going to pay somebody to do the bodywork. This is going to be a man for or a car for the man who has considerable skills in bodywork and uh, loves dealing with it. Now that's not to say the things are wrecking is falling apart because clearly from this you can see it's not. Most of the paintwork, probably the last paint that work was done to the vehicle was in whew, well 1987, 1988, perhaps a bit of perhaps even 1980. Um, but as I say it's got a fair old shine to it. It's not been washed and polished properly until the other day for about 30 odd years and as you can see it looks pretty tidy coming now we're on the driver's side of the car and coming along and again pretty reasonable coming down here coming around to the back corner and let's say we're pretty straight the rear wing's all good now if you look down here at the bottom of the sill we'll actually see the first of our problems which is basically the bottom of that sill was rotted out and it needs a new flange putting in also down here the back edge of the wing where it joins the bodywork again we'll need a new flange and some repair now I don't deem these to be particularly major repairs to somebody who actually knows what they're doing probably quite expensive if you got somebody to do it and uh, you weren't capable of doing it yourself but if you're a, a pretty competent metal basher um, then I don't see there'd be any real problems a basic folding machine and some time and patience and you would be able to quite easily construct a repair panel to go in there coming along to the back here and the one thing that seems to be putting many people off is the fact that there's some perforation of the gutter along there on the back edge on the driver's side it's somewhat worse on the passenger side and you can just see inside the car there's the stainless steel trim that goes on the uh, the sill which is which has actually fallen off but if you look at the actual gutter there you can actually see that the gutter is a part that is screwed onto the outside of the vehicle so basically it's what they call a J pattern. Now I've investigated and this J pattern gutter, gutter in here uh, is quite extensively used still in, in the coach building industry for the building of commercial vehicle bodies. Now these days it's made out of aluminium um, it's about 20 quid for a four meter length and it's available from a company called the Aluminium Warehouse and I see no reason why if you make a former to that shape you wouldn't easily be able to bend it up it's actually screwed through the roof and there's an ash frame inside the roof which it screws up to so although many people well, one or two people who've seen still photos of the car have actually shied away from that because of that as you can see it's only on this side the back section that needs repairing um, going around well, this is the passenger side as you can see at the back there there's, there's quite a bit needs replacing there probably up to about halfway along the car and we've got a bit of a split in the roof there but again with this gutter off uh, a new section could quite easily be welded in there and by the time the car is actually uh, finally ready to go I may have actually done that um, it seems to be putting quite a few people off for, uh, for some unknown reason but as you can tell the way the doors open and close there's absolutely no drop in the body on this side and really the same on this side everything shuts resoundingly nicely and everything's lined up as it should be now the thing with this car is there's nothing hidden there's no fancy paintwork that's been done on it over the last 10 years five years whatever uh, yeah it's got scratches on the paintwork it will need a respray but what you see is what you get um, there's not tons of filler in it all over the place 
Now, the, both of the bumpers, front and rear, um, the front bumper will probably clean up quite well. If, you, if you're not after a concourse car, you just after something you can run and looks nice. You know, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, looking at the headlamp rims, etc. They're all good. The headlights all work. Uh, and there's reasonable chrome. I wouldn't say it's pristine chrome, but there's reasonable chrome on the front grille. And I've not actually tried cleaning the surrounds up on the, uh, the windscreen particularly. I have done a bit on that side of the looks of things. Um, but the chrome work, if you look inside, again, with some Solvo, that'll all clean up nicely. Now the interior itself on this car is particularly original. Um, down to the carpet, which quite frankly are completely knackered. But having said that, they'll make a bloody good uh, pattern for anybody wanting to have new carpets made. Now there's a couple of small holes in the seat at the back, but nothing that can't have a piece of leather let into it. Looking across the back here, the rear part of the shelf's going to need replacing, and some of the woodwork around there. And also looking up at the roof, a bit of the headlining has been moth eaten at the back just there uh, but the rest of the headlining generally is pretty good until we come to that section I'll just put the radio light on until we come to that section just above the, the windscreen there which has got one or two bits it will probably need a new header rail but I think that header rail will come out on its own and won't cause any problems now looking at the dashboard, there's a little bit of woodworm on the right hand side there, but it's it's all sort of con contributing to the uh, the story of the vehicle, shall we say. Um, you know, it is what it is. It's been around for 70 years, uh, and it's probably in better condition than I am, to be honest with you. And again, as you can see from the front, I'll just pop out. The doors are all good, opening and closing here. And looking at the driver's seat and the passenger seat, again, they're all in good order. The floor's open at the moment because that's where the battery goes. But again, on this particular seat, need a couple of bits putting in on the passenger side just to make it good. And the hand rest on the door there, or the elbow rest, has, has popped open, but it's only the stitching that's gone. The spare one is in the uh, in the boot round the, round the back. Um, I also have a spare rear light glass as well for the vehicle, which somebody told me the other day they're about £100 each to buy now. But again, if you're thinking of a professional restoration, then unless you were me and had an awful lot of money and an awful lot of sentiment, uh, you'd be looking at a non starter to be honest with you. But for somebody to spend their own time on, uh, so it's a little bit of rust down the bottom here, which is starting to come through. But again, these, these wings come off fairly easily and shouldn't really be a problem. Now, down the back here, we've got some damage there and across the back in the boot. So it opens nicely. There's the remains of the toolkit there and we've also got basically a piece of plywood that was rotted out due to, to age and that's the hinge for the spare wheel door which has, has come off on the passenger side but I still have it and you can see the rear parcel shelf there again which is just basically a piece of plywood has given up with age I suppose 70 year old plywood and much of that's left in the world today not a lot well, chrome, chrome placing on the bumper to say it's seen better days would be an underestimate. Uh, it either needs another bumper on it or replating or even uh, there's a powder coating process that looks very similar to chrome nowadays that you can get done um, which would provide a, an adequate finish for the for the uh, for what's needed and there's uh, quite a bit of repair there needed to the spare wheel door but again with time and patience not something that's impossible to do. It's time rather than money that this vehicle probably needs. Um, and so unfortunately it's time that 
now I don't have. Um, I mean, the plan is if the vehicle doesn't sell, well, initially we're going to go to Turkey for a year. So, um, if we don't find a buyer for it, then the vehicle will probably be put into storage for a year. Um, if I can investigate out there and find a way of getting it in, I may do, but I would prefer actually to sell the car to somebody who's going to enjoy it, drive it, run it. Um, so need, the person who buys it really needs to be somebody who has a fair bit of skill uh, and a few facilities realistically. Um, it's never going to be worth a million pounds. Um, Daimlers are somewhat unvalued I'm afraid. Well, am I afraid? No, I'm not. It's a good way of getting into a nice quality classic car without spending a fortune. Um, I say that one of the reasons I've done this video is for the people who um, have contacted me from a fair old distance, although I've sent them some some photographs of the vehicle, um, I thought it might be nice to have a video that um, gives them a bit more insight into it, shall we say. So they've, uh, they've got to walk around and that's about all I've got to say for now. As I say, there's a clip in the middle which will show the vehicle running up and down the drive albeit without a bonnet. Um, if you wish to contact me, um, having seen the video, um, I've got an email address which is, hopefully I can put on the end screen, which is Harriet, which is spelt H-E-R-I-O-T, Payne, P-A-Y-N-E, at AOL.com. Um, thanks for watching. There may be another video, there may not.